There's a chair in there. You put this little helmet on. This is where you sit. And then it amplifies your psychic ability. That's what allows him to be able to find the missing mutants when they go missing. It's what allows them... Remember that one scene in uh, in, in X-Men where... Um, one of the whole movies, actually, the plot is that there's an e that there's an evil force that's going to harness his consciousness to get him to run the chair and basically kill everybody who's a mutant on the planet with the psychic amplification. So this is all based on this real technology. Uh, now here's what was strange: this 20-year loop has a bad side effect. When the Philadelphia experiment happened 20 years ago. There was an enormous amount of energy released. That energy reflected through the time domain. It got stuck in the time domain. An enormous, almost a nuclear release of energy was caused in the Philadelphia experiment or the Rainbow Project in 1943. There's a 20-year harmonic, and during certain favorable points in the harmonic, if you have a huge energy release, you're going to get another one down here, and you have a conduit or a gateway between those two areas. Okay, This is bad. We don't like this. This is called a rift. It's very dangerous. It's very serious. 1943 created a rift 40 years later with 1983, I guess somewhere around here. And um, 1983 was when a, a creature got through August 13th, 1983 and trashed the entire base and destroyed the Montauk base, destroyed the chair. It just so happens that Daniel called in sick and wasn't at work that day. So he didn't get mind wiped, so they didn't erase the memories out of his mind. So he remembers everything that he learned and everything that happened when he was working on this base. Somebody has a question. I just heard it in my head. What kind of creature? Um, the creature was based on the movie Forbidden Planet, which was the monster from the id. The secret that, that Daniel knows, because he was in contact with the guy running the chair, Duncan Cameron, is that they were very pissed off at these Nazis. They did not like the Nazis. They didn't like what they were doing. They thought they had too much power. They thought the potential to misuse this technology was much too vast. And they said, we need to figure out how to stop this thing from going on. They created the monster with their own thought. The official view is that it's a rift and that some interdimensional monster came through. The reality is they took advantage of the 20-year harmonic, which they knew would have that energy, and they used it to create that monster to kill the program, and it worked. So that's the truth. What's that? They would be the, uh, what you would call in the Stargate SG-1, the Tok'ra, the inside people who are not going along with their bosses, but they're rebelling, the white hats, so to speak. So, Daniel, hold on real quick. I'm losing track of everyone. So Daniel is the burly guy you met and knocked out for Dan Burry. Right? Daniel is the burly guy that I met. He named himself after Daniel in the Stargate series, Daniel Jackson. Is he okay? Are you sure he's okay? I mean, I'm sure that he's okay now. <laughs> well, um, he's he's in seclusion. I haven't even seen him in two years. Um, he usually lives out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, he doesn't like a lot of uh, human contact because he's been psychically trained. He was measured as a P7. He had a special psychic gift called a conduit, which allowed him to feel other people's emotions and thoughts very, very strongly. And as a conduit, he was able to take, like in did everybody see the movie Powder? He could do just that. In fact, it's possible because they, he was the only person they ever found that could do that. It's possible that the movie Powder was written about him. I don't know that for a fact, but it's possible. He also has some really weird stories. He said that he was accosted by a gray extraterrestrial when he was in his uh, remote location, and he shot it with a shotgun. And he said that they found out in these programs that the, that the extraterrestrial physiology is, is like a vegetable and not like a body. So you can shoot them and they don't, they don't get hurt. This thing, and it just sort of kept walking. <laughs> Very weird, huh? So yeah, and that's what's so strange is that when I was in high school, I wrote a story about a guy who shoots an extraterrestrial with a shotgun. And we started to find all these weird correspondences. The first time I took LSD, and I have done acid, I did, you know, 20 some odd trips. I had a very strange experience, 
as I was coming down the stairs, I was peeking. I was like, what in the world is happening to me? I had this feeling that if I did not create the floor under my feet with my mind, that I would fall through the floor. And so I'm walking very carefully like this, tripping, just, oh, shit. It turns out that that's exactly what happened in the Rainbow Project Philadelphia experiment. It turns out that the people who could remember where they were before they went into this gray mist of zero time didn't get stuck in the hull of the ship. But the people who couldn't remember where the ship was and couldn't create the ship from memory, when they got through, they were stuck in the hull and died in many cases because you can't pull somebody out. So he said, you know, he has some weird ideas and, uh, you know, he thought that I was connected to the project somehow, like my soul is basically helping to relieve the karma of the planet uh, through this thing that happened. And I guess this is part of what I have to do is, is share this with you because obviously there's a reason why I met this guy. Um, and that's the funny thing, too, is you can tell that this is real because people ask me a question and I pop out with something new, something new, because I've had many, many hours of conversation with Daniel. No, I'm not gay. No, we're not homosexually involved. <laughs> Somebody wrote that on the Internet. It's like, pff, forget it. I haven't even seen him in two years. We were just friends. That's all. Okay? Get over it. And even if I was gay, which I'm not, what possible difference would that have to my message or to the value of the material that I'm sharing with you? Can I get an amen on it? Come on. I mean, really, let's just let go of these ridiculous prejudices because everybody has a right to be here. Every soul is precious beyond measure. I am not a racist. The DNA level shows us that we are so similar that you cannot actually tell what somebody's race is from a genetic test. It's only very, very weird special things that they have to go out of their way to find to look. But we're 99.9% .9 the same. It is. It's a smear tactic, and it's being used to dumb us down and to get us fighting with each other rather than looking to the source of the problem. Okay, But that's what we're doing. By shedding light on it, we're helping to understand it. So the reason why I'm going to go into rifts and holes in time is because it has to do with 2012 and it has to do with you breaking down the conditioning. Let me finish the sentence. Breaking down the conditioning that has kept you from seeing the greater reality that we live in. Question. Can you go back to the 20-year-old time Yep. Okay, okay. He asked a good question, which is, okay, the apexes of the, of the wave and the, and the bottoms of the wave is a 20-year cycle, but especially from top to top, the 40-year cycle, from 43 to 83, you get this big conduit, you get this big rift that was created by the Philadelphia Experiment. Now, again, it could have been anywhere. It was the fact that the Philadelphia Experiment was done when it was that created a harmonic coupling 40 years later. That's all. I don't know for a fact that that was on the peak of the wave. He didn't say that. However, this wave is a subharmonic. It's only a subharmonic. The 2012 wave is much more powerful because we're dealing with ultimately a 26,000 year cycle. Don't say anything, man. I don't even want to hear it. All right. Um, then here's my question. All right. Uh, you can and you can talk as long as you like. Um, you have a unique perspective on Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey. Yeah, I knew did, this was going to happen. Correct. No, 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 no. I'm a psychic like, premonition, right? Dude, I ain't backing on you, man. You know. Um. Uh, okay. So you see how you threw me off here. All right. So, so what was I talking about? Oh yes, 2012. The uh, the idea here is is that having a unique perspective on Edgar Casey. All right. Casey did, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, he did a grand total of, I think, only 14 readings that actually dealt with the future, right? About 14 readings that did with the future. Yes? Yes? Uh, and of those 14 readings, a lot of them were interrupted by his clients who were, you know, who said, I don't want to know anything about that. Just tell me if my partner's a crook and things like that, right? 